I've been asked if it matters what religion you choose, um, if you want to contact with angels or deities. And in the way the answer is both yes and no. Um, because the same beings exist regardless of whether you believe in them or not. So angels exist, gods exist, spirits exist. And if you choose to believe in them, that's fine. If you choose not to believe in them, they are still there. Um, so in that sense, um, also an angel or a deity is not a very exclusive thing. It's not like, oh, they will only acknowledge your existence if you're a Christian or if you're a Buddhist or if you're uh, a Hindu or a pagan. Um, what does matter is a little bit being recognized by them, how easy it is to work with them. Um, because there's in a way both the, the personal um, involvement you have, and but also the, your ancestral involvement of the region and of the culture. So for instance, if I want to work with the Norse gods and I try to do so in South America, it doesn't mean that I can't. But it would probably be easier if I did it in like Iceland or Sweden, where the Norse tradition, uh, tradition was established. So the deities exist very separate from uh, humans or their beliefs or their cultures. But the channels, basically connecting our world to their world, are more established in certain regions or certain places. So if I am in Sweden, it's already easier if I'm in Sweden on a place where there used to be a temple, it's even more easier still. Because the energy is already there, the energy channels are already there. And also if you're from a Swedish bloodline, then also the sensitivity to those energies is already part of your energy body. So it is easier for people to work with their own traditions. Because through evolution, basically, their energy bodies are attuned to their specific set of deities. It doesn't mean it's not possible. So, anybody can learn to work with, for instance, the Norse gods. Um, but it's very much about um, difficulty and also very much about respect because ultimately a deity has to acknowledge you as being on you know, one of their students. They have to accept you as a student. So it's not so much about the desire, like, okay, I want Odin to support me, but Odin also has to want to support me. As I said, this is also very much the difference between uh, different willpowers. So angels act because the divine being wants them to act. And whether you call an angel an angelic being in a Christian sense, or you look at it from the, uh, for instance, Vedic sense, where you have uh, yeah, the Srimad Deva also as a manifestation of God, a direct manifestation. So you could say the Srimad Deva is an angel, because he's the same and non-separate from the divine being also a way of looking at it. And in a way, Brahma, uh, Vishnu and Shiva, they can be seen as angels, which are also the same and non-separate from the Supreme Being. So ultimately, tradition doesn't matter. And ultimately, the angel will manifest because God wants it to manifest. So when it comes to angels, it doesn't matter very much. When it comes to deities, there is much more of a difference between being respected, being heard. Because often people as a whole are also students of a certain deity, of a certain power, which is teaching them to develop as a people. So as a member of that people, there is already like an innate talent, which also already makes you more attuned to that power, or to that way of living, thinking, evolving yourself. Um, so there is very much a cultural impact which makes it easier to work with a certain set of gods. Um, also the 
method of your uh, learning, what cosmos you belong to, also really makes you more focused on certain uh, yeah, deities. Because deities within a certain culture are also more attuned to that culture being either more in the Arimanic, Luciferic, Satanic or Divine Cosmos in how they perceive themselves and how they perceive the deities. Uh, so you can have, a, for instance, in China you have the celestial bureaucracy which is very Arimanic in nature. It is very much everybody has their position, their station, they give orders to the place below, they receive orders from the place above and if you have a request you give it to the, bureau, the right bureaucrat and you will get the response through the proper channels. Um, very Arimanic system. And for people who live in or have lived in a very organized bureaucratic society for millennia, it's very normal. And there's in a way a harmony between like their everyday life and their spiritual life. If you look more towards like uh, Western Europe, North America, there it's a very uh, Luciferical impulse. It's all about personal freedom, personal progress, personal development. Um, so they're much more interested in their self-development, self-expression, self-discovery. And this is their way, their method. And their gurus, their masters are also from the same tradition. Um, so they're more looking for teachers to, who can give them something specific they desire or examples of people who have that, um, which is also fine. Um, then of course you have the more nature related religions which you still have in South America, Africa, um, the northern parts of Asia um, and here it is much more satanic in nature. It is much more about living in harmony with each other, cooperating with each other, uh, exchanging services like, okay, you help me, I help you, I take care of you, you take care of me. Um, so it's much more social and also the, the powers are much more social. They uh, relate to in a way, being invited, being given gifts and um, it's almost a, yeah, a trade culture you have there with all the different deities. And of course you have the more divine impulse, which is more ascetic in nature. Um, but you find you do find ascetic impulses all over the world. Um, but not very specifically more in one culture than another, although the Japanese do come to mind. Um, so where you're basically focused on purity, on perfection, on um, like following the higher the master without question. So in that way it is slightly different from the Luciferical the impulse. They may seem the same but they are fundamentally different. But all of these gods and deities from all these traditions they are used to being approached in a very different way. Prayers are different, rituals are different, rites are different um, and also the people are different. So the type of help, the type of advice you receive is also very dependent on the type of God you ask. Um, for instance, if you have a goddess of love and um, the culture can be polyamorous, can be harem based, can be monogamous. And what will this goddess teach you? Also depending on the culture this goddess will teach a different form. It will emphasize how to live with that, how to work with that, how to get most out of your relationship if you're polyamorous, if you're uh, in a harem based culture or if you're in a monogamous culture. Because ultimately it is about your progress and your ability to have experiences is also limited by the culture you live in and the people you live amongst and also by your own personal desires. So it is always best if you have people around you who need similar lessons, who need similar experience, who can share similar experiences with each other. Because if as a group 
you invite a certain power, a god or a goddess, to help you, it is much more likely you will receive a servant or help or a blessing than if you are alone. Because ultimately, energy and time and space is limited. And if by sending one messenger you can help 20 people, it's a lot more effective than if you can help one person with that same messenger. Now, I would think that for effective religious practices, uh, building a healthy community is much more important than um, what specific religion you choose. Of course, you should use a religion which is um, yeah, suitable to you, preferably easily accessible, and preferably also with enough adherents who can gather together to give more power to the rituals to invite greater blessings, greater support into the temple. So, but ultimately the religion has to have some basis within the society, within the physical world, to be able to really grow and thrive and help the people within that religion to grow and thrive. And there's always pioneering powers who are just helping one, two or three people who incarnate in the world to form a new religion, form a new movement. Uh, but these are really the exceptions, and most of these yeah, seeds ultimately fail to flourish and to produce more seed. So there's many attempts at reviving, at creating more pathways for people to grow, so that the person is able to find what they need. It's very much like internet shopping. You're, there are so many internet shops, but which one is best for you? It's hard to choose. It's the same with religions. But first you should be aware, like, what is it what I want to learn? Who can teach me that? Who can give me that? What are the spirits or the ancestors or the culture or collective consciousness or deities which can provide me that knowledge? And if you know that, you can compare how these different deities work in different cultures and religions. And then you can try to find the best match. And ideally, not just a match between you and the power, but also to find a community which you can become a part of. And that way it is most easy to get enough support, enough blessings for your own spiritual development. Um, so yes, every religion is very specific um, in operating within a certain cosmos and being more attuned to people of a certain nature or a certain bloodline. But, um, as I said, it is like kind of a default setting. It doesn't mean you cannot customize. Um, you can also customize your own rituals, your own prayers. You can use, in a way, the religious default to pray for the typical things in a typical manner. But there's, then you have a very yeah, good chance that these prayers will work, will be recognized also. Same with rituals, if you do a ritual in a traditional manner, you can be pretty assured of how, what the results will be like. But you can also experiment, form your own rituals, form your own prayers, get things exactly your own way. Once you have built up enough understanding and enough communication with the gods, you can work on it together. So you can think about, okay, I would like to do a ritual for this. How to do that? Please inspire me, dear god or goddess work with that and then you can create very nice healing rituals or blessings uh, in this cooperation which can be really attuned to the individual you're working with or the situation you're in. It requires a bit more work but I always feel it's well worth it and if you're serious about uh, becoming a priest or a priestess it's actually very essential that your communion with the deity and your skill at prayer and rituals is good enough to really uh, in a way, custom fit the blessings to the person and to the situation. And a lot of this custom fitting is done by the higher powers, but you really need to have a form to conduct these energies well as well. So I don't believe in very uh, prescribed rituals which have to be done exactly so. I uh, prefer to custom make them 
Um, custom making has of course a risk because every human decision is prone to human error. Um, but for me personally I think it's well worth the risk. Um, only if you're working with big groups then I would say use the standard rituals because there is no need to custom fit it because you have a very diverse group of people you're working for. Uh, so then it is best to use a very safe, secure method where you're sure that the results lie already hundreds or thousands of years of tradition. Another thing to note is also that traditions themselves uh, can degrade and also rituals can degrade. Um, if, for instance, a ritual is abused or a prayer is abused a lot, then um, the deity or deities involved or other powers involved may distance themselves from it. They say, like, okay, I was teaching people this way, I was helping people this way, people are just trying to abuse my power, abuse my blessings, I stop supporting it. And um, then they pull away. So, in the best sense, such a prayer or such ritual will have no effect. In the worst sense, another power will step in and pretend to be that deity or god. And you may actually get some very low or demonic spirit performing the miracles and the healings and at the same time binding and enslaving you uh, to it. So, if you're going to work with rituals or with prayers, try to really do so under the guidance of a person who is in a priesthood position, who does know the deity involved and until you get to know the deity yourself can really give you the feedback on who you're really working with, who you're really talking with. Because prayer and rituals are an art, not just a science, not just read the book and do it. And many people do get into trouble by just reading the book and performing the ritual. Because rituals, by creating a portal between other worlds and ours, will pretty much always have an effect. There is always a power who is interested in using that portal. And if you are not skilled enough with attuning your portal to exactly the power you need, some other powers will step through. So be a little bit cautious with that.